This week's Parsha, we're confronted with a fascinating story. And it's the story of the deception of Yitzchak. Or what appears to be like a deception, but perhaps on closer examination, it's not a deception at all, but it's a revelation. Whereby Yaakov has to reveal to his father Yitzchak that he has qualities of an ace, of qualities that Yitzchak did not able, was not able to see in him, didn't know that he had. So we know there's a blessing that needs to be given, and Yitzchak has a choice, he to win one of the two children, it's either Esau or Yaakov. Yitzchak wants to give it to, to an Esau. He admires Esau for his ability to master the world, to be in the world, to make things happen. Yaakov, on the other hand, is, is a person of, of Torah, it's a person of purity. If the blessing has to go to one, so Yitzchak knows, I have to give this to an Esau. Hopefully Yaakov will inspire Esau to use it correctly, but it's going to be a long exile, and and we need control of the physical world. Rivka, however, sees it differently. She understands that Esav isn't who Yitzchak thinks he is. Perhaps growing up in the house of Lavan and Besuhel, she gets it. So what does she do? She arranges with Yaakov, we're going to convince your father that you're Esav. Now what looks to be an act of deception, perhaps might not be deception at all, but revelation. So what happens? We know that Yaakov puts on the clothing of Esav. Interesting, the clothing. Yitzchak is blind. Is it for Yitzchak? Maybe it's for Yaakov. That Yaakov should feel the part. She places fur, or, or goat hair, on two parts of, of Yaakov. On his hands, and on his neck. The hands we understand, that maybe Yitzchak will feel his hands and detect that hairiness, which is the characteristic trait, of the quality, the physical quality of, of an Esav. But why the neck? And not only that, what's interesting is, she doesn't place it on the Urif, which is the back part of the neck. She places it on the Savarov, the Chachat Savarov, which is the front part of the neck. And that's a part of the neck where, number one, one would not normally feel. Perhaps one would feel the back, but not the front. And number two, people don't tend to have hair there. So very strange places to put that hair. And what makes it even a little stranger is that Yaakov goes forward towards his father, and he has a little conversation with his father, and it says, V'yobol aviv. He comes to his father, and he says, V'yomer avi. He says, my father. V'yomer hineni. And his father says back, hineni. Interesting, a dialogue, which is the exact dialogue that was used on the mountain by the Akedu. But at that time, Avram was the father, and Yitzchak was the son. And Avram had to do something that he didn't want to do. Now all of a sudden, Yaakov is the son, Yitzchak is the father, and Yaakov quotes to him almost verbatim, verbatim, the language of the Akedo. Remember when your father was on that mountain and he had to do something he didn't want to do, well, you're the father now, I'm the son, and I have to do something I don't want to do. Let's reflect back on the Akedo. A hint. He goes towards his father and he says to his father, he says the words, he says, he said, Kumna, please get up. Please get up and eat the game that I brought. That word please is interesting. Because apparently Yaakov says please. Asaph doesn't use the word please. Yaakov, can't you control that please right now? Why are you speaking the voice? Why are you speaking the language of Yaakov? He goes closer. And Yitzchak asks a question. Yitzchak says, how'd you get back here so fast, my son? I just sent you out to get the game, to hunt the, hunt, hunt the wild animal. The wild animals we eat. So Yaakov speaks the language of Yaakov once again. What does he say? Ki hikor Hashem elokecho lefonai. Hashem your God has prepared my way. Yitzchak's suspicious. Esau never speaks about Hashem. Yaakov speaks about Hashem. Here's Yaakov on a mission to secure this blessing. And what was his blessing? This is a blessing in which one would have control of the physical world. An essential blessing. If Esav has it, Rivka understands and Yaakov understands it, it's used for destruction, to destroy the, the incepted Jew, Jewish people. But Yaakov has to get this blessing. Wouldn't it be wise for Yaakov not to speak the language of Yaakov? Just hold back the pleas. Maybe it's not the time to talk about Hashem. Then what does Yaakov do? He goes right ahead, uses his language, the pleas. He speaks about the Holy Sha'ola. Apparently the voices were identical. Only difference was, Yaakov says, please, and Yaakov talks about Hashem. Yaakov, now is not the time. 
And what does this do? Of course, it arouses suspicion in the mind of, of, of Yitzchak. And first thing Yitzchak says, he's a Gishana, vi Amushcha b'ni. Come close, let me feel you, my son. Are you really Esav or not? Interesting. Yaakov, so to speak, has been discovered. One might expect that he'd retreat and, and, and what does he do though? It says, Vayigash Yaakov, Yitzchak Aviv, Vimushayu. Yaakov approaches his father and he feels him. He touches him. And Yitzchak exclaims, Yomer Akoko Yaakov. The voice is just like Yaakov. Vyadayim with Esav. But his hands, they feel just like Esav's. And then the verse says, Velohi Kiro. He didn't recognize him. Yahweh Yodav Kiri Esav. Because he's feeling those hairy hands like Esav. Och, he was the Eros. Och, he was the Eros. Because they're hairy. Now this juncture, Yitzchak is stuck with a real dilemma. He has two sons. He has a son who has voice. Who has Torah, who has purity, that's Yaakov, the coal. And he's a son who has hands. He can master the physical world. He can make things happen out there. He can be the general, the businessman. He can control things. He has two sons. He wished perhaps he had a third son. He wished perhaps he had a son who had both those qualities, but he doesn't. And he has to decide where to get this blessing, and he feels it has to go to the one with the hands. And now he has a mystery man in front of him. Who is he? I don't have such a son. I don't have that third son. You know, one might expect at this juncture, he would stop and pause, maybe even call for Rivka and say, you know, last recollection, didn't we have the hand, the son with the hands and the hair? And then we have the son with the, the voice, the Torah, but there's someone in front of me who has both. Do we have such a son? He doesn't do that. The next word says, and he blesses him. He gives them the brach. He blesses them. How can he bless them if he has such uncertainty? The answer seems to lie in the fact that he wasn't uncertain at all. He did wish he had a son who both had the beauty of Torah, the idealism of Torah, the purity to go in the world and bring the Rabbani Shalom into the world. And he wished that son too could be practical, get things done. Thinking he only has one, he wants to give it to the Esau. But now Yaakov comes in, disguised as Esau, with fur, with hair on his hands, and interestingly, hair on the Chalkat Sevarov, the place of the neck where one doesn't normally have hair. And he's communicating something to his father, where you think, I'm just voice. I also have hair there. What's under the soft part of the neck? The voice box. In the place where you think I'm just theoretical, where you think there's just purity, where you think that I can't relate to the world and, and get things done. Now look what I'm doing. I'm putting hair there. And look what I'm doing. I'm disguising myself like an Asaph. I'm pretending to be an Asaph. I'm giving you hints along the way. Remember the Akedah? Remember when your father had to do something he didn't want to do? I'm doing something I don't want to have to do. But I have to show you that I have these qualities. In other words, Yaakov isn't trying to deceive his father. He's trying to reveal to his father, I'm that third son. I'm the son you wish you have. I have those qualities of Yaakov. I have that beautiful Torah. But I also can be very practical. I can be pragmatic in the world. And when I need to get the job done, I can do it. I'm not trying to deceive you. I'm not going to hold back from saying please. I'm not going to hold back from speaking about Hashem because I want you to know who I am. But I want you to know who I really am. I'm really that third son. I'm that son who has both qualities. And I'm the one you need to give that blessing to. And in fact, Yitzchak recognizes that. He doesn't need to ask any more questions. And he gives him the blessing. So we see it's not so much a deception as a revelation. But I think perhaps what we need to think about when we read the story and maybe in light even of this week when we went to Washington with 300,000 other Jews is we went and we, we had to be practical. We had to be pragmatic. But the pragmatism was done in the Yaakov type way. It was done in a way where policemen commented they've never received so many thank yous. It was a rally of, of, of achdos and togetherness. It was a Kiddush Hashem in every way. 
We go into the world and we have to be pragmatic, but we act like a Yaakov, even in our pragmatism. Even when Yaakov needs to, to do something to show his father what he has, he does it in a way where he's holding true to truth. I'm not trying to deceive you. I just need to do what I need to do in the world. And that's the beautiful trait that perhaps has been seeded into the Jewish nation. When we need to be in the world and be pragmatic and we need to get the job done, we do it in a way which is so different than the other nations. I think to myself about our army in Gaza right now, an army that does so much to secure and protect all life, an army that sends text messages to the enemy, an army that tries to get civilians out of the way. When we have to act, when we have to be real in the world, we have that Yaakov quality. And that's so unique. And that's perhaps something which we inherited genetically, spiritually genetically, from this story right here in Yaakov's revelation to Yitzchak about who he really was. Wishing everybody a wonderful Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. And Bezorat Hashem praying for peace in Eretz Yisrael, praying for the safe return of our soldiers, and the safe return of all the hostages as well. Wishing you a Shabbat Shalom.